The language of modern art can be daunting. Abstract artworks are often misjudged. I mean, how many times have you heard someone say, I could do that, while staring at a Pollock or a Rothko? The beginning of modern art was a time of dramatic change. Artists started to move away from classical styles. Instead, they reimagined and rejected traditional aesthetic values. This led to the emergence of a myriad of pieces, sometimes with little to no meaning. Yet, they still make us feel something. From the birth of Impressionism in 1860 to what is the more recent genre of destination art, the scope of modernism is broad, complicated, and extremely rich. Art historian Amy Dempsey joins me now from London. She has penned a book titled Modern Art that maps the different styles, schools and movements to unravel the mysterious air surrounding one of the most dynamic periods of art history. Thanks for being with us today, Amy. Now, uh, Art Essentials is a series uh, of an accessible and affordable guide to art. What was the most uh, challenging part of covering such a broad topic like modern art? Um. I suspect part of the hard bit was trying to decide which, sub, which uh, movements to use, which, which artists to include. Um, I wanted to try and give a, great, a big, a broad taste of different flavors of different types of works. And I suppose that's how the, the format came about, where it's a succinct, concise def definition and some examples and stories, and then drawing out the key features and the artists so that you can that you've also got the tools then if you do want to find out more. So it's kind of trying to give a taste of lots of different uh, modern art movements that have had an impact. And then hopefully you'll get hooked and want to go see them or uh, find out more. Now, your book works as a guide uh, to modern art in Europe and America. What have their contributions mm -hmm. uh, been to the modern art world? Um, I would say that since, the, especially the part that cover, this book covers from Impressionism up till now, uh, the de defining feature would be that these were artists who were really trying to engage with um, their, their day. It wasn't like classical art from the Renaissance, which um, you know, dealt with gods and goddesses or lords and history and mythology. This, these were artists and people really trying to figure out how to express themselves in the world in which they were living. Um, and a sense of experimenting with different materials and different audiences. and. I mean, I think you get a real excitement, a sense of excitement of um, experiment, experimentation and really trying to um, address the world in which they li were living, whether it was exciting with new technology and travel or whether it was the horrors of war that they'd just been through or were living through. So I think there's a real sense of the contemporary at that time um, as opposed to broad mythological themes. Now, you've chronologically divided the subjects in your book, and it begins with the rise of avant-garde and ends with uh, beyond the avant-gardes. Mm -hmm. In what ways is the modern art scene the same as how it was back in 1860? I mean, again, some of it, I would say, is similar in that it's still artists or people trying to engage with um, the world in which they live and, and trying to express themselves and how they feel about that. Um, there's also certainly a strain of artists liking to shock and to wake people up and make them think of things differently or look at the world differently. And I think that's certainly very relevant today, too. Now, if you were to choose one modern or contemporary artist that changed the history of modern art, who would that artist be? I think it would have to be Marcel Duchamp, who is kind of a one-man art movement in, in himself. Certainly in the second half of the book, you'll find him referenced often either as someone who participated in a movement or was inspirational or had ideas or he had his, you know, he just, and he continues to influence lots of people and ideas and he really changed the way um, people thought what art could be made from, where it could be, what, what it could address, who, who it's for. So he really just kind of blew open so many different avenues of the art world and art making. Now, the last subject in your book is titled Destination Art, and it ends in 2002, but we're in 2018 now. What is the current trend in the art world? Well, uh, the Destination Art, I've got kind of starting at 2002 because that's when um, I came up with the, the title to encompass these kinds of works that um, are uh, not in museums and galleries, but um, 
are out in the world and you need to go travel to them and see them and it becomes part of this experience. So a lot of the movements in the last section of the book are ones that are still ongoing. And I think a common trend for them is that it's much more out in the world. It's less of a studio based. Um, the experience that you have with the artworks are much more includes, including, there you can be immersive, there's installations, art is out in the world in which you live. So I think, I think it's uh, much more expansive is probably a good way to, to describe it. Um, mm -hmm. It's no longer just one person with an easel in a studio. So it's everywhere and can be made from everything. Now, as we can only read uh, history backwards, it's hard to conceptualize and conceptualize the contemporary art world. And, and you do this uh, really well in your book. Uh, I know you've touched upon it a bit, but what do you want readers to walk away from after reading your book? Yeah, I really hope that people, I, I, I wrote this book and other books I have about modern art. Um, for people, I know for a lot of people it is still intimidating or, oh, it's not for me, that's weird, or I don't get it, I'm not smart enough, and nobody wants to feel like that. So for me, I think it's fantastically interesting and exciting and a really interesting insight into the world or how to look at the world and people's ideas of different times and places. So I'm hoping that it's a friendly helping hand to say, look, this is amazing, come try, and that it gives you enough, the, the reader, or of the tools to go and explore on their own so that you can go into a, a museum or art gallery and go, oh, I get it. I can, I can find my way in and start to think about it. So it's not trying to be bossy and say, this has to be like this, but it's trying to be, here's some ideas, some ways to approach it, and go for it and enjoy it. All right, Amy, thank you so much for writing this book thank and sharing you. your expertise with us. <laughs> thank you for having me.